and here we go. And this is Flash at the Dork Table on Saturday, the 25th of January, 2020. And today, I've got a special guest coming in to play with us. And uh, I'll introduce him to you after I get through with the... Uh, he'll call in. Let's just say that. And I'll say uh, hello to the bots and bodies participating in the epic chat. The RealLibertyMedia.com today. We got, hey Grim, we got Farman, Beetle, Grimnir, Moose Girl, Kate, Anti, Asmo, Chill Sedun, Echelon, I Be Don, C, Java Doctor 2, Master Brow, Poopster, Prince, Robworks, Rooms, Vanna White, Weather Door, Phantom, Chaskura, Circle, hello honey, uh, Cookie Crazy, hmm. Cyborg Noodle, E-Man, Ensiv, Me, Frumpy, Frumpy Work, Gromit, J's Nines, J's Kiss, Pwn Sauce, Rituals, Sat Puppet, Slim Jim Thim, Smatas, The Holiest Roger, and z -Picks. And that's the uh, the bots and bodies for your typing enjoyment in the RealLibertyMedia.com chat today. And I'm stalling a little bit because I had a Miss Mary decided to go visit with her grandchildrens today, and uh, she's not available for the dork table extravaganza. But I got somebody else. The sidelines that have been trying to get on the show for a while, but he's not real big on doing the dork table with me for some reason, probably because of all the screwing around, but we're going to give it a shot as soon as he gets set up on the wire and gives me a bell, and in the meantime, we have to say a, hmm, a hearty farewell to our main film poster and psychotic um, Gooberzilla seems to have, uh, well, done himself a little bit of uh, harm and got removed from the uh, the polls, the rolls, the list, and made himself not welcome. You know, and it's pretty hard to do that in a chat room, to be honest with you, because I should know, man, I get into the disagreements with people all the time, but we keep it semi-civil, like Salt Lake City Mike and me don't see eye to eye, but nah, nothing, nothing serious ever comes of it. Mike might get a little hot and say, kiss off, and I talk to him the next time and, and all is well. We start over. And there's some people that just don't have the ability to uh, leave the shit in the toilet and flush it. They like to carry it around in a little bag and show it to you. Hey, look what I did. I'm so wonderful. You know, and we're supposed to be a world of grown-ups, but we're not. You know, when the hey, Dork Cakes came in late, Mr. Cakes. Even Sir Guild, hey, pancakes from way over yonder on the sofa atmosphere. Hmm. Anyway, I was on a rant about um, hmm, personalities being uh, disruptive, rude, uh, one-sided. What would the term be? I'm not really sure. But we all piss each other off to some level at some point. I mean, crying out loud. But uh, where does just being a regular asshole and actually being an abusive cunt, where is that fucking fine line cut? You know, um, I don't know how to judge it. So what I've done in my chat history is when... I can't get along with certain people. I just ignore them. Can't read it. Can't comment to it. Nothing you can do anyways. Text on the screen. But I got to admit, some people have a way of getting under your, you know, under your skin and just shoving things at you that you don't want to think about. And I don't mean that in a good way, like Federal Reserve Banking, inoculations, chemtrails. Montezuma's Revenge, the Holocaust, 9-11, Kennedy. 
I guess you get the freaking point by now. I'm stalling so uh, my secret guest can get connected and join me. But uh, it was a, it was kind of disappointing to see somebody go so far to uh, push everybody else to the point of uh, abandoning the person. And you know that's the topic. And there's been two of them that have done that. And the funny side of it is the person that is the rudest and the most insulting that gets the kick, they don't seem to understand what they've done. And I wonder how serious that truly is. Because when I'm rude and nasty to people, I think I know it. I think I go out of my way to know it. Um, I, don't, I don't waste my nasty side on people that don't seem to deserve it. That might be one way to put it. Other people are more frivolous with their verbs. and uh, Or, the way I saw that stuff without going to, and naming any names, Goober and Moose, was uh, Goober was just a failure at flirting. That's how I saw that. But mm, I wasn't the recipient of it. So, hmm. Mm. Yeah, well, Grim, you know, I'm not Vinny. And I don't see the world through Vinny's eyes. I see the world through my eyes. And there's a fine line where where do you cross between, you know, just being abusive and having fun to being a pain in the ass where people really don't want you to be there. You know, it's it's not easy to do either. I mean, crying out loud, I've been around for quite a while and said a few shocking things to people over the years. And yet, never have I been banned, you know, been called names and such. Probably been blocked on the uh, chat room by other people. But I seem to have the sense to not push the envelope so far that you can't pull it back and try to reload it again. But, you know, the world's coming to an end. <laughs> and people are getting, uh, hey, there he is, there he is, hold on. And people are getting a little bit nervous. I think, and very serious. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. I need to do something with my headphone speakers. There we go. So I'm ringing my secret guest. Oh, okay. Give me a minute. Hold on. Uh, I'm stalling for my secret guest. Hold on. Let me let him know I'll wait for his little problem. And he'll sort that out. And we'll be up here and flying in just a few minutes. This is your pilot, Flash, speaking, and I've just taken six hits of acid. Please enjoy the flight. We're going south. <laughs> anyway. So I was ranting about uh, where is that line between abuse and just being a nasty prick? You know, because, uh, oh, no. Well, fix it, Mr. Rob. Fix it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Moose, I, I truly believe that in a sick way, what I was reading was a man's horrible attempt at flirting with somebody online and getting drunk on top of it might not have helped. But, you know, the, uh, you read it your way, I read it, and that's what I mean. You, everybody sees things how they see them. And I'm not going to say that you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that. You do what you do. And people need to learn to live with the fucking decisions that they encourage other people to make. And that, oh, I didn't really know what I was doing, crap, doesn't work after you're like 13 or 14. You don't get away with that anymore. No free rides. Mm. Oh, how's the guest secret? <laughs> Beetle ass. Well, that's because I didn't want to commit Rob Works to the show until I was sure that he really wanted to participate because, uh, well, Rob found a, a new uh, a new product on the market and seems to be working very well for him. And I thought he'd want to get on the radio and let the RLN chatters hear it from his own words rather than just read the type. You know? And uh, apparently it didn't work. He says his mic doesn't want to work. Well, that doesn't mean that with a little button pushing, you can't fix it. Hell, even I get on here. 
Well, of course not. Moose Girl, you're you're the recipient of a lot of shit I didn't read because I'm asleep. But what I was saying is, when I saw Goober starting all this out, it seemed like he was just trying to flirt, and it just didn't go anywhere for him. And instead of accepting that, being friendly, he went the other way. Ever see an 11-year-old try to get another 11-year-old's attention? They do the most insane shit because they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> And I don't think grown-ups are beyond that. I think a lot of us adults behave badly. We don't know we're behaving badly when we do it. And then, of course, Goober had like 50 times where people were telling him, hey, you shouldn't do this. He chose not to listen. But then, you know, shit rolls downhill. So when that happens, then somebody else comes out to step up for the guy that should have shut his mouth but didn't. Oh, I don't know. I Maybe it's just, uh, I'm thinking maybe I'm next, you know, because I'm pretty abrasive with people. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't sugarcoat and sweet talk and la 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 my way through life. I tell people what I think, the way I think it. And sometimes I'm uh, a little abusive with the cuss words, but not always. I know how to tell people to go to hell without swearing. It's not hard. Yeah, dogs will be dogs, Beetle. I understand that and uh i'm just saying that the way i read it not what it turned into what it turned into i missed because i blocked him about three months ago i stopped i just stopped bothering because there was like uh no way to resolve the problem you know it takes two people to fight and it also seems to take two people to resolve a problem that exists between two people and then the beauty of the, the chat room is when you have a problem with one person <laughs> you got a problem with eight people that aren't even involved in it because you join sides, see? And you can't have a good fight unless you join a side. And I don't think uh I don't think Rob's gonna join me today. I'll do an hour show on my uh, as a solo I get. Oh, what do we got here? Oh, that's okay, Rob. It's just I prefer having somebody to chat with when I do the shows. Never was one for the solitude. But I got to admit, this is way better than being punked about not being welcome at Chloe's fucking site. I was so tired of that shit. You know, I just think that uh, maybe people just don't really think clearly about what they're saying to others. I try to. I don't think I do it completely every time. But I give it my best, you know. And I'm not talking about the, the jokes and the crap little stories I write about the sun rising on the empire. Because I really believe the government of the United States is an empire. It's part of the English empire. It's always been a part of the English empire. The English never let go. There has never been an America. It's all been a big story passed on from child to child to child. Here we are all these years later. The biggest warmonger machine on the planet. And that's not what gets the attention. What gets the attention? All the shit. Climate change and chemtrails. Everything but what matters. Never see anybody come out and say, Hey, you know the money's not real? And this is how money is made. And this is why it's not real. No. What do you get? Well... We're going to raise taxes, and we're going to fix it. Well, over the years, I've done a little bit of reading about finance. And what I came up with, in a nutshell, and it came off a link that I saw the other day, where other people have this ability to take these obscure ideas like finance and explain them in terms that I can understand. And I listen to these folk and these folk, and then I repeat what I hear from these folk. But I do it in my own special little way, which probably kills the translation just a bit. But I'm going to give this a shot. Now, according to, uh, I think it was the Kaiser Report. I got it off of, I think, CT off of the Cowboy Tech, off the Real Liberty Media. The other morning, he put up a link. I'm pretty sure it was a Kaiser, this guy named something Kaiser. I don't follow names and personalities that closely. But the... The bulk of the of the topic was what is the end result of all this 
big investment that the Federal Reserve pumps in all these billions and billions of dollars into the system. Well, they don't. They don't pump it into the system. It goes right directly to the hedge funds. There is not a dollar makes it out of the hedge funds that's going to be considered profit. Because these people want uh, constant profit going up, going up, going up. Well, how do you make all this money out of what? Shit that doesn't work, products that kill each kill people. It's, in, it's totally insane. Anyway, so what I was getting to is we don't see a nickel of what the state, the government, tells us that they're doing. It's all handed over to these multi-billionaire, trillionaire people. And then over the years, 2 3% might trickle down to the public, and we, we Fight over these scraps like dogs. Don't even know it because you call it going to work. But work, mm, I don't know. It's When I worked, I find work that I like to do so that I wouldn't... Feel, yeah, Kaiser, thanks, Beetle. Uh, I'd find work that I like to do so that I wouldn't feel abused. You know? uh, most of the people I knew when I was in my younger days... Complained about their job. Eh, I don't like this. Eh, I don't like that. So I started to figure out ways to earn a bit of currency without having that suffering part go along with it. Unfortunately, uh, <laughs> kept me out of the... Well, fortunately for me, unfortunately for everybody else, it kept me out of the, uh, the written game. I did everything off the books, off the, uh, off the paper trail. And as it worked out for me, it was the best thing I could have done. But on the other hand, you alienate yourself from society by not being a part of the society. Being on the fringe to the level I've taken it has, well, it's left a, a little bit of a scar. Mm. And I don't really think that the quality of my life is is what I'm speaking about. I'm thinking more of the interaction with people based on these preconceived notions they have set forth to them by the fucked up societies they're out of. And to make it clear, when I was in Scotland, I spent two and a half years in Scotland. Not a lot of people took the time to actually know me like Kelly did. People would assume, well, you don't work. Well, I'm... 50 odd years old, what do I need to work for? Well, you must be on the dole getting that government money. No, I wasn't doing that either. But, the see, it, we're stuck in these little, these little boxes, frames of reference. You know, you only know what you're taught. Me too. Somebody taught me all this crazy shit that I know. I'm trying to read the chat. Yeah, Rob Moose, Rob said his mic wasn't working. So that kind of killed getting him on. I was hoping to. Hmm. Rob's a very interesting character, that Mr. Rob Works, the bubbler guy. Well, maybe I'll get him on another time and I'll just do a, uh, I'll do a show today about how disappointing we are to each other. <laughs> well, we got expectations. You expect this, I expect that. Everybody expect, expect, expect. Where does the given part come in? You know, it's easy to tell somebody else what to do. The hardest fucking thing is to show them how to do it. Instead of, wait, we'll go to a topic I don't usually bring up. My daddy. <laughs> My daddy was the king of do it. Do it, or do it now, do it right, or else. And in the long run, it worked for me, but it didn't work so good for my little brother. And... I think it's what gave me that sharp that uh, sharp tongue that I've been accused of having. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't think I'm that bad, but I'm not listening to it. Then when I hear other people say shit, I don't have the ability to compare it to what I say. I don't think I even think about it at the time. It comes later on. And then after the fact, you always leave out shit. So... I never really have a good reference to set a set a wrong right, but when I do something right and other people like that, 
that's that's easy. But doing it wrong. Hmm. How can you talk wrong? It's an interesting thought, isn't it? I think I do it. I don't know why I think I do it, but maybe the results from other folk over the years have led me to believe that. I might be missing a word or two when I listen. Because the hardest fucking thing to do is listen. It's easy as hell to talk. It's easy to give everybody else advice and do this, do that. But it's really hard to do is to show people, especially online, internet, uh, what you're exactly talking about. Because when we type shit, it doesn't always translate very well. Hmm. And Cake says, do it now, Mr. Cakes. <laughs> yeah, you're a pushy fucker, huh, Mr. Cakes? Telling him what to do. Good old Woody's playing right back with you. Anyway, yeah, I'm on a, I'm on a mental bent, like a, hmm, I don't know, like some kind of a chessboard. And the way I'm looking at the world and the way the things come to me when I read about it and when I see about it, they don't match. Like lately, what's this lately? Coronavirus. We have the coronavirus. Well, the so far, so far, the Chinese got it. And then there's like, I've read everywhere from two to I don't know, thirty-five cases in the states. But there's uh, what, three hundred and twenty million people in that country. Probably plus a few others, the travelers that aren't documented as being there. You know, coming and going travelers visiting, doing business. They don't count those people. But they're there. And that's a lot of people. Because like where I live, there's like in this whole country, population's less than 6 million. And 6 million is a lot of people, especially if you have to cook. But, you know, that's just the way I see this shit. And uh, the world is so fucking big and it got us all crowded in these little bits of allotted. This land is allotted for humans. This land is allotted for wild zebras. And all like that. And then they're going to separate the fuck out of us until we turn on each other and start shooting. And it's coming. I, Virginia didn't work out. I don't know why. That should have been a bloodbath. The way they were talking it up for weeks. And nah, nothing came of it. So, hmm, what what has this government situation that we're in got in store for us? That's what I'd like to know. The truth is never going to be what we're going to hear. We're going to hear all these bullshit stories like we always do. And there's a little bit like Mary. Oh, there's a grain of truth in there somewhere. Well, yeah, but you know, when you put a pile of shit on a grain of truth, you know what you're going to find? You're going to find shit. And by the time you get to that grain of truth, it's going to be covered in shit. How are you going to recognize it? You can't. You think you can, but I don't think so. So what I did, it's all bullshit. All of it. Well, let me see what Rob's saying. Uh, oh, oh, he's going to reboot into Mint and try to get his mic working so he can jump on here and have a semi-sensible conversation about his stuff, I hope. Let's give him a few minutes and see what happens. I'll stall with another epic tale of the world as Flash sees it. Because, um, I don't know. I don't think I'm enjoying uh, all the negative drama you know, that we're all so addicted to. We don't really probably know that. But if you check out what you're watching on television, movies, and whatnot, all this shit is just garbage, nonsense, all of it. Go back as far as you want to. I have. In my personal opinion, yours might be different, but my personal opinion about all this crap is there's an us deep down inside, and then there's an us that's the outside. And it's really difficult to look beyond the outside and get beyond it. I think we're all stuck there. And society doesn't help anything with all this crap the last 40 years. Pushing every little group that has a little following to the front of the line. And giving them preferential treatment because they're different and they need support. Well, when you do that, though, you leave the 
average Joe. He's the guy that needs the support, the guy that's not trying to be special. But, you know, here we are. I don't know how to explain what is actually cooking on my front, my, uh, <laughs> my court, my frontal court. What's that? How do you say that? Your uh, frontal cortex? Ah, that thing up there. Where my third eye is residing. Because uh, I think we got one. Now, I believe that the fluoride and the crap in the food. Well, I know that, Cakes. You know that. I don't either. We watch uh, movies. <laughs> Minty Fresh Rob coming back. I hope so. He'll have Minty Fresh Brett from his changeover. There he is now. <laughs> so hang on, folks. We're, we're trying to save the dork table and get somebody on here to yak with me. I don't do so good just uh, sitting here talking to myself sometimes. It's kind of weird. I look for some links to read and Unfortunately, all the shit that I get, it seems like I don't find the stuff with text. I find all the stuff with links. Yeah, hey, and Beetle has made itself the lasagna of a lifetime. He's been cooking on it all day long. And uh, if he was really nice, he'd drive to New Mexico and share some with Grimner. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe that would be Hansel. I'm just playing around. So let's see what we got going. I'm stalling a minute here. Ah, yeah. Finish off a meal the way God intended it, says Woodman. Well, my bro. Anyway, we're still hanging around waiting for uh, Rob to try to sort this out. I think I got him in one of those moods where he actually wants to chat. Usually he's a layback kind of guy. Doesn't have much to say about much, except it all sucks. I'd like to thank Rob for <laughs> coining that phrase because uh, the best I could do with it, it's all bullshit. You know, I have my opinions too, and uh, I don't think we're I don't think we're doing things right in life, right? I think that everything that the legal system has dictated as bad for us is good for us, and everything that they say is good for us is bad for us. Maybe I'm wrong, but I I don't think fluoride in the water, poison in the food, shit on the sidewalk, <laughs> stuff like that. Now <laughs> he says now wire doesn't want to install. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rob. Anyway, I thought I was do I I get screwed up on the time, and I thought I was I had an hour left, or I would have give you more warning because I I. I sent you a message on wire, but you didn't realize you weren't using it a week ago because I've been wanting to do this. And if uh, if it works out, it does. And if it don't work out, we'll try it at another time. I don't want anybody getting all blusterated because they didn't get to hear Rob Works tell us all about this stuff. Speaking of this stuff, I know I've said this 55,000 times, but I think a, an apology from the government about lying about hemp and cannabis all these years would clear up all this legalization shit. Just stop the prohibition. But the governments don't want to do that. And one of the reasons is the, the war on drugs money is so goddamn addictive. They got Denmark into it right now. There's a, there's a slowdown on commodities right now. Because the source of it is based out of the Middle East. This is my thinking, not everybody else. I don't know what everyone else is saying. I just know what I'm saying. And since all this Iranian shit hit the airwaves, Trump did that killing thing. Right after that, something went hey, completely haywire. It was rumored there was going to be a problem, but that kind of guaranteed it. And I would say having, you know, U.S. aircraft carriers and the straight of Hormuz, that'll interrupt the flow of just about anything. That would probably stop a woman's flow. <laughs> Never mind. That was a horrible joke. But uh, anyway, told you I'm dangerous when I don't have a partner on this show. It's really bad. Hmm. Trump offers condolences to Japan for Godzilla attack. 
there's a link on a real liberty media for an anti. <laughs> oh, uh, see, and it goes, what? Are we going to, we're all missing Goober right now. Oh, yeah. I don't, you know, uh, hmm. I don't know what to say about that, except uh, I just hope that I'm not the next one that gets bumped, you know, because I say shit people don't like. But then I'm not, per- you know, I, I only attack one person on a personal level. Me and him have had this thing going back and forth for years and years. So it's really, I don't know, it's, I don't think anybody takes it serious. It's like two idiot, two idiots calling out each other stupid, and eh. But I think when you uh, when you start mixing the genders and you get out out of pocket and start making I don't know what would the right words be uh, making commitments that you shouldn't make, <laughs> telling people about things that shouldn't be done. Or even spoken about, but eh, that's my opinion. Eh, you didn't get robbed today. I ah, know I didn't get robbed today. <laughs> Sock puppet is at it. Uh, well, I don't know. It's not over yet. Let's give it an hour. It's a half hour now. Let's see if he comes on in the next half hour. I'll do a two-hour show. If he doesn't, I'll do an hour and then we'll just call it a day. But I was ranting. I was on my epic rant about the apology that we'll never get. Because I keep hearing people on radio, on links up the fucking wazoo, about this insanity to legalize cannabis instead of just take the take it off the prohibition. Fuck it, stop that. But guess who doesn't want to? Mm-hmm. I bet you don't know. I know who doesn't want to. Jeff Sessions and all his friends. You know why? Well, they make a ton of money off the war on drugs. See? First off, they make a ton of money selling the shit. And then they make a ton of money arresting you for buying the shit. And then if you get caught in the wrong state, they lock you up. Take all your shit. It's a lucrative business. Who'd give that up? I wonder if I was a law-abiding citizen and... I wanted to be a police officer if I would have a different opinion about the danger of cannabis. But there is no danger to cannabis. All this stuff, all these years. I was singing naked on the windmill. Yeah, you had a bottle of whiskey and you did that. You didn't do that smoking weed. Nobody does that smoking weed. People that smoke weed, some of them tell stories. Some people mix it with other shit, and then they make the weed look bad when it wasn't the weed that did it. Weed is innocent bystander. (laughs) It's just a pretty little flower, and all you got to do is dry it out, smoke it, and uh, it calms you down. I think think that maybe (laughs) if the politicians were to be honest, and sit down and open a session of uh, whatever they call that shit, the politics shit, with a big fucking hookah, and they all had to smoke until they couldn't lie, it would be a different world. I think lying is the cornerstone of our depression, right there. And some people that are lying don't know they're lying. The guy that's all deadhead against weed because it's the devil's lettuce and 75 billion people died smoking it is delusional. But he don't know he's delusional. He thinks he's right. Because he was taught to believe all that shit. Then they say that about me. Well, you were just taught all that bullshit because you're crazy and you smoke the devil's lettuce. So we're stuck in this fucking loop over a bullshit story by some religious nuts and a government. I think it started, yeah, it all started in, uh, what was it, El Paso, if I'm correct. It was a while ago, somewhere between the 20s and and the 30s, somewhere in the 20s, right? And the the Mexicans would work in the fields, and they'd smoke that marijuana. And the Mormons got wind of all that, and they said, hey, wait a minute, these Mexicans are smoking the devil's lettuce. And they're going to rape all the white girls and cause chaos. We better put a stop to this. 
And that's what happened, pretty much in a nutshell. And people believe it because it came from a source of religion, just like the shit from Israel. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> Remember me and Mary were talking about real? <laughs> they just spell R A you know E instead of R E A to trick us. <laughs> and we're tricked too. We, we believe that. Right? You like Trump? You saw Trump kissing that wall? I hope you understand the significance of that religious spectacle that we witnessed on the interwebs of life with old Mr. Trump and Obama, uh, Clinton, Bush. I don't know how far back it goes where they actually got the sitting POTUS to go to Israel and stick his lips on that wall and give God a little love note. Hey, God, look, it's me. Read this. Uh, and, of course, we live in this world where, wow, a, a, a horrendous number of human life beings seem to believe this mumbo-jumbo crap about a superior being. You know? <laughs> and then they, they claim to live by a book. For one, it wasn't written in their language. It was translated and translated and translated and edited and translated and edited and translated and edited. But it is preached to these people as the word of something special. <laughs> I guess it's easier to blame him than it is to blame yourself. You know? I'm going to blame God for all my fuck-ups because, well, the Bible says I could. <laughs> says so right there on every other page, don't you know? <laughs> Watch our own family sometime. You'll see what I'm talking about. Hmm. Of course, to all you folks out there you know, that were raised with all that living good by the good book and all that crap, all I've ever seen from religion is bloodbaths, massacres, land grabs, People being put in prison for having different opinions, sometimes killed for different religions. Don't forget that. Do you believe in a God? Yep. Oh, good. Do you believe in my God? Nope. Whoop, you're dead. George Carlin. So, this ain't new for me. I, I stole it from George. He was a... He was a very interesting fellow, and I noticed that after his wife passed on, and he was married for 25 years to this woman, and after his wife passed on, he started to get political, more political. He was goofy and funny for quite a few years. Then, all of a sudden, he got into politics, made it all the way to uh, Congress. There was a big link about him you know, speaking to Congress. It's really hysterical and funny. And the thing that wasn't funny is right after he did that, he did an interview a few years later. And he was 75. He said, well, I expect to be around for quite a while. I, I'm in decent health. And the next thing you know, he has a heart attack and he dies. Now, I've read horror tales about the CIA having these special guns that can inject you with a thing made out of ice to give you what seems to be a heart attack. <laughs> I don't know. Why not? Shit. Watch enough movies and you believe you can go to the moon. Hey, want to talk about space travel? There's another fantasy I don't believe in. I don't think anybody's ever been any further up into the sky than an airplane will go. And what got my... I think what really got me going on that wasn't so much the... Uh, the round earth, flat earth argument. But it was watching the trajectory of one of these space things that they're flying off to wherever. It goes straight up for about 12 seconds, and then it starts to veer off to one side. And I started to wonder, wait a minute, why is it turning? I thought it was supposed to go straight up. You know, wait, we're on a spinning ball, right? <laughs> so, wait a minute. That thing's curving, and we're spinning. Are we going the other way? Are we going the way that it's going? What's going on here? Okay. Well, when I can't just easily come up with 
My eyes see this, and this is what it means. That's the end of it. When I find confusion, I just abandon whatever I've been taught and go, bullshit. Just like all this inoculation shit. Just like the chemtrails in the sky. It's all crap to fuck us. And here we are letting it happen. <laughs> we, can't, we can't stop the machine that we started. Ha ha ha. Now, I didn't start it. Did you start? I think Cowboy started it. He's not here. We'll blame Cowboy. <laughs> no, we won't blame anyone. It's, uh, what would you call this? It's just a misunderstanding. You know, when you when you promise people things that you can't give them and payday comes along, you got to give them something. But I never thought that people would be so collectively ignorant that they would actually believe the crap that the state tells them about how things happen. <laughs> like <laughs> slavery, <laughs> the war. <laughs> I've been higher than that, you damn right. But uh, in a good way, Grim. Um, I don't abuse my highness. I only abuse my highness when I drink. When I smoke, I'm a happy guy. When I drink, I get a little sensitive to things sometimes underneath the layers. And that irritates me to uh, to, to be disappointed because there's so little reason for me to engage it. So when I do engage it, I think there must be a reason. Something's got my attention. Pay attention to it. Hmm. It's not easy to balance my way through this fucking existence. So I hope that everybody else is having an easier time because... Man, being around human beings is a fucking pain in the ass. I agree with you, Grim. Human beings have been so misled and so deceived and disappointed. I think we're living in the uh, in a disappointment time. You know, when I was twenty, thirty, even forty, life was still fun. People had a good time and they engaged and they did shit. Now it's just. Uh, Sit and judge. Let's sit and judge the things that we don't know. Because talking is dangerous. And I think so. Uh, I don't think that the, uh, the ideas that I have are fit for public consumption in the first place. People don't know how to handle what I say on a chat site. So you can only imagine what it would be like trying to talk to me in a, a public setting. Outside of, hey, how the fuck are you, wah, 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 that's it's about as much as it can, as far as I can get with it. Uh, conversations with me, nah, people don't like to have them anymore. I'm too, uh, I think, negative about all the, the horrible shit that's been brought to my eyes, I think. This, uh, this clarity about the world around me. And the immediate world doesn't fit the, uh, the the global world that I'm I'm always encountering on the internet, you know. And it used to be newspapers, and before that, TV and newspapers. Now it's uh, the interwebs. So now they've got this flawless, perfect way to uh, get us to dance to the song that they play. And it's working, too. And I went from, let's see, two dead in this coronavirus thing to 36 in just a couple of links. <laughs> in one, one is sitting, like two hours. So, who knows? I mean, you can make a meme about anything you want to now. And there's a lot to tell the people out there. So, what, what do you believe? And what don't you believe? And then why? I'm not afraid of all this. Um. Uh, I've seen enough virus movies to know, in my mind anyway, that if that was true, they wouldn't make a movie about it. You ever see a, a real movie on the mainstream about how the Jews took down the Twin Towers? <laughs> and how Giuliani, on that one particular day, decided not to go to the bunker that was made especially for him, should there be a terrorist attack. He said, nope. Not going there, stupid, because that building's coming down in about five hours, and I ain't going to be in it when it, when it falls. So here we are. <laughs> hey, Rob got back, but we don't know if he's, uh, if he's got mic acceptability or not. We'll, we'll see. 
We'll give it 15 more minutes. I think I can bullshit for 15 minutes about absolutely nothing. Or maybe not. <laughs> anyway. So, what would the world be like if we were uh, exposed to the truth about things? Would it be any different? I think it would. Uh, of course, that's just me and my imagination running amok because I don't know. You know, I'm just assuming that uh, the uh, the results of all the negatives come from lies. You don't get uh, inoculations from truth. Truth would truth would leave you skeptical about that if you sat down and went, well, okay, well, what is this? Well. They'd explain it like this, if they were to be honest. Well, we have this little vial, and it's got the illness in it. And we're going to give you some of that illness so that your body can create a defense against the illness that we just shot into you with no warning. Because, boom, there you are. Now, if you get something in a natural fashion, I don't know, is it that instant? How quickly do you get the flu from somebody else, if you were to get it? Hmm. And then how do 5,000 people die from getting the flu? The fucking flu. I don't even remember the last time I had a flu. I've had a cold or a, a threat of a cold, and I shoot some damn vitamin C, and boom. And in 24 hours, I what, was I feeling bad? I don't remember <laughs> Ju <laughs> Juliani, Julie Liar, I'm telling you, man, these grim. <sighs> it makes it makes dealing with uh, Goober a pleasant experience compared to the government. Of course, he is a representative of most of that shit. You know, blindly, I don't think he even saw it. But eh, well. I just don't, uh, I like Vinny in the sense of, I don't think people should be um, put out. But, on the side that I'm not like Vinny is that, you know, if you're going to come into somebody's house and take a shit in the living room floor, don't expect to stay for dinner. It ain't going to happen. It just doesn't work that way. So, hmm. uh, being split on a decision is a real drag. Because, Part of me is for it, and part of me is like, well, but I'm not the one that he was giving all the shit to either. So I'm kind of prejudiced in that, is that he never really said anything to me one way or the other that it was just, he was just annoying to the point of, uh, I don't want to read that anymore. It's just boring, not painful or insulting or anything, just bored of it. And I like the Real Liberty Media, but, you know, some people need to uh, experiment with some new ideas every now and again and get out of the rut. I try to get out of the rut. I don't know if I'm in a rut, but I guess if I was, somebody might go, hey, Flash, you know, you're in a rut. Hmm. I know what a rut is. <laughs> it's a start. Well, we got 12 minutes and we're still, we got Rob joined up, but I don't think he got minty fresh breath and made his microphone work. But, now he has something to look forward to. And maybe we'll get Rob to join me and Mary. I think Mary's going to be with me on the uh, In a Perfect World on Tuesday. But, she did have grandchildren to visit today. She gave me plenty of warning. So, you know, let her have her fun. And <laughs> don't put her on the radio when she don't want to be on it, I suppose. So let's see. What do we got in chat? Well, we don't have much going on. A few people are just bantering, doing a little fishing, and there's the dork table with me and Rob works live, but Rob didn't show. <coughs> Excuse me. Due to technical difficulties. Oh, yeah. Anti says we are not safe yet. Yeah, you are. If you're under a threat, half that threat's in your head. I think the uh, the Nazis in the uh, in the World War II era, they did the same thing the Americans do with threats, and threats are just so fucking potent that if you put it in the right words, 
and the right folks see it, and then the right folk repeat it over and over and over until you, you know, you've heard it a hundred times. You start to believe it. Even if you don't believe it, there's something to that repetitive pounding of the end of the world, the end of the world, eh, it's here, eh, hide, hide. Well, I've been hearing the end of the world for since 1970 or so. <laughs> Guess what? The world's still here. I'm pretty sure. I can't prove it, though. But I'm still here. Are you still here? <laughs> well, I don't know. What are we going to do with this world? We inherited a, a mess from whoever we got it from. And then uh, when we had it, so to speak, in our younger days... We were told, shut up and sit down. The adults are talking. Go away, oh, we are busy, oh. And here we are. And all the people that we trusted in the 60s, they sold out in the 80s. Their kids sold out after them. Here we are now. So like I was saying in the first place, this all goes comes down to the finance. All the problems are all based on one thing, fiat currency. <laughs> and then everything, everything that we think is separate from it is just an extension of it. Our, our ability to consume oil like it was the only way to, <laughs> to supply fuel on the planet. When over 100 years ago, Tesla said, Here, my friends, free electric for all of you. Have fun. And Mr. Westinghouse said, oh, I don't think so, bucko. <laughs> Where's the meter? What? See, because I don't know when it started, how they got us all trained to uh, perform like trained seals to exist on planet Earth and eat and sleep inside when it's cold or wet. But they've done a number on human beings, big time. I mean, have you ever noticed the animal world, when I walk my dog and my dog encounters another dog, sometimes they bark a little bit. Sometimes they even show off and, get, rah, 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 and they get all growly. But most of the time it's just show. And then the times where they don't get all growly, they're sniffing each other's asses like, hey, how's it going, buddy? Okay, well, we are very similar to that in a strange way. Not that we sniff asses, but, you know, the handshake or the the hello, the greeting, and the acceptance that comes from that. And then every once in a while, you see two dogs growling at each other. Uh, one of them's going to be in charge and the other one's going to not be in charge. Well, I don't want to do that. But not wanting to do something is always different than understanding what you what you think something is, not you, but this way I talk. What what I think something is isn't always what it is. It's how I see that particular thing. And depending on your upbringing, you can make a mess out of just about anything given the right circumstances. But that also leads me to believe that. Given the uh, right tools, you can fix just about anything, too. I don't know. Maybe as a species, we've, uh, we've devolved to a point where there is no repairing the damage that's been done because one lie on top of another lie on top of another lie with never telling the truth about anything, it, it makes the mess that we're in. And... You can't fix. You can't fix this. This is so far beyond fixing. We all all that's left is to tolerate it until the state figures out a way to put you down. And they've got an arsenal like a the way I saw this gun thing. Guns are an obsolete weapon against the powers that be. Now, through their own information, if you look hard enough, you can find that they have weapons that will. Put a gun to sleep. I mean, <laughs> they've got sound waves. They've got light waves. They've got... They can play music outside that will turn your head to mush. But people believe what they were raised with. You can protect yourself with a gun. 
Well, what's being left out of the equation, in my opinion, is they're holding on to the gun because of the other guy that might fuck their life up. But they're not saying out loud, well, you're, you're the enemy. The government is the enemy. You can't say that. Mainstream will not allow that. You'll never see it on CNN or Fox. You might hear it here every fucking day 50 times, but you're never going to see it on mainstream. Not in our lifetime. And the chains, well, we got five minutes left. The chains are getting tighter. According to what I read, the uh, whoever, whatever entity that thinks it runs the interwebs is going to start deplatforming any <coughs> opposition to uh, <laughs> inoculations because they got big plans coming for inoculations. This virus thing. Well, all I could say about that. <coughs> Watch watch a few virus movies. <laughs> that, wow. That will pretty much convince anybody that it's real. But if you think it through far enough, you know, it's self-defeating to do all this. So, to me, the threat of it is way more valuable than the action of doing it. So... We got one dork table over with. Maybe we'll get Rob to come uh, come join me and we'll talk about his new product on another time. And I've still, I thought I got over the jitters of doing a solo. I didn't. <laughs> I've tried. And whew, it's just the hardest thing for me. I don't know why. And thanks a lot for everybody, uh, to everybody that hung out with me today. Hey, especially the cakes, because I know cakes. Cakes comes by the RLM on Saturdays to see if we're going to talk about him behind his back on the, <laughs> on the Dork Table Podcast. So, uh, I guess we could do a little bit. Oh, Hal Anthony is returned. He's due back uh, tomorrow at his normal time. I believe that's noonish on the West Coast of California. And uh, everything else is uh, is the same as it's been. But last week, Hal had a problem with his internet for a couple days took him down and he just couldn't get back but the problem he had has been resolved and he's due back tomorrow same bat time same bat channel and uh grimner leftovers monday night that's probably the funniest but he's really evolved on that show he does <laughs> he gets me laughing when he does the leftover program and then uh we got me and grammy mon uh tuesday and then uh, you got Prince and uh, I forget who, uh, Z Picks and Rotten Socks, I believe is the lineup on the, on the Power Hour show now on Thursdays. And then on Friday, we got Grim and Moose doing the uh, <laughs> Reeker's Ball. And if she don't show up, it's Balls to the Wall with Grim near. So, hey, there's my hour. Thanks a lot for hanging, everybody. Good night.